I opened my eyes and found the most entrancing face staring back at me. Clear skin, dewy eyes, and a mischievous smile, all framed by soft golden locks. Involuntarily, my hand crept toward her cheek for a caress. But when flesh met mirror, I finally woke up and realized. Huh. Yes. Good morning, me. Must still be hazy from exchanging bodies yesterday. Lacing my fingers together, I reached my arms up for a test stretch. Stiff. <laughs> Not one to be bested by a vessel of my own design. I brought my palms together and began twisting. Take that, you stupid spine, I thought. You will rue the day you defied me. Just how many backbones and digits and faces had I conjured? I'd lived long enough to know it was foolish to try and keep track. Cagliostro, did you hear? We're going to visit a new Skydom! Lyria's voice echoed from behind the door, snapping me back to the present. Who sounds fun! I'll be out in a jiffy! My voice was a weaponized rainbow, strategically pitched to invoke thoughts of hugs and sunshine. As the cutest girl in all the skies, no other tone would live up to my utter perfection. You see, it's a common myth that cuteness is in the eye of the beholder. But actually, as I have witnessed through my research, it is a fundamental law of reality. I quickly brushed my disheveled hair, minus one lock, as per the theory of adorable bedhead optimization, and went to the door. The crew would need me at my cutest if they were to survive an untrodden skydom. About 2,000 years ago, before the war, I was a wretched, sickly little thing. We lived in a village with no doctor, so all I could do was wait for the release of death. I still remember the defeated look on my sister's face as she attended my bedside. I couldn't blame her, not when she was surrounded by the other villagers and their whispers. None of them thought I was long for this world. But back in those days, the sky was full of children who would never live past adolescence. So my life was tragic, but common. With the exception, of course, of one detail. My intellect. I had been working on a theory of reality, one that would let me rewrite the laws of existence. I dubbed it alchemy. I was too weak to leave the house. But my sister would fetch me the necessary reagents for my experiments. At first, each failure was more spectacular than the last. Creating a fully functional body from nothing but dirt and speculation was complicated. Instead, I focused on creating an ageless vessel capable of housing a soul. Hypothesis, test, fail. Hypothesis, test, fail. My pile of discarded monstrosities grew with each unsuccessful trial. But, finally, I succeeded in producing a small life form, no bigger than your average roach. Sure, a misplaced footstep would have killed the damn thing, but it was life nonetheless. And it was proof that I could achieve mastery over my own mortality. Now that I had more data, all it took was a few more months of testing, and voila, I had synthesized a flesh bag for myself. My soul was finally free to occupy a worthy form. Now, repeat this process a few thousand times, and my reputation spread throughout the skies, garnering love and admiration from the masses. Alchemy was at its apex, and death had been conquered for all. <sighs> Yeah, right. More followers meant more opportunity for betrayal. 
Eventually, a faction of alchemists turned my own bloodline against me, and they managed to seal me away for centuries. Assholes. These magic prison stories always end the same way. A few hundred years of slumber, and people grow complacent. A group of clueless travelers, aka the crew of the Grand Cipher, managed to stumble upon my inert form and, foolishly mistaking me for a primal beast or something, lifted the seal. Immediately, I wanted to eradicate them. No one could find out I had regained my freedom, I would not suffer entombment again, even if it meant I needed to transmogrify a few Skyfarers. But then, I laid eyes upon Lyria and her blue hair, and there it was, an entity that I could not identify. I, who had unveiled the very laws of reality, could not classify her existence. She was surely from a different plane. My interest was piqued, and for that, I spared the crew. <laughs> what can I say? Curiosity killed the alchemist. With no particular agenda for my newfound liberty, I offered my services to these Skyfarers. They would give me unfettered access to the girl, and I would give them unrestricted access to my findings. And as a bonus, I might save their asses a few times along the way. Of course, the captain readily accepted. Though I admit, there was something about the gleam in the captain's eye that caught my attention. What was so special, you ask? <laughs> That's for Cagliostro to know and for you to find out. On a typical humdrum day, I was browsing Sierra Carte's wares for a few chemical essentials. Impressive how the world had become a network of convenience. What were previously rare and unobtainable items were now collecting dust on a trade woman's shelves. My eyes traced the rows of flasks and potions before they settled on a vial clutched by the man standing next to me. Oh, toxin. An excellent choice. Save for the fact that his confused and brooding expression revealed he didn't quite understand what he was holding. Who was this moron? Well, now that I was aware of the potential hazard, I couldn't leave well enough alone. Traveling with the crew had certainly rubbed off on me. Excuse me, mister. That looks scary. What you gonna do with it? He looked stunned. An appropriate reaction, given my stunning countenance. What? Uh, this? It's pigment. Needed for painting supplies. Oh, I didn't take you for a painter, mister. Pigments were frequently composed of toxic earth metals. Perhaps I worried over nothing. Uh, it's not for me. My little sister's the artistic one. Huh? His entire mood shifted, tense shoulders relaxing and lips curving into a soft grin. It was nothing like a few seconds ago, when he seemed to be studying the pigment like his life depended on it. Perhaps he was a few rupees short. No, mental calculus doesn't translate to confusion. His look was more... concerned? Ugh, no. I'd seen that exact expression before. So what color picture will she paint? Cagliostro sure wants to see the final product. Um... Aw, pretty please. This is coming out of nowhere. What the hell? Did I not give him the world's cutest plea? 
How dare he refuse me? He will suffer for... But I guess it's okay. I actually have some free time now, if you're eager. There. That was more like it. Lyria, the captain, and I followed the man to his studio, listening to him jabber about his life along the way. His name was Heimel, and he had been living alone with his sister, Shanae, ever since their parents died when they were younger. Their life was simple, he explained. But a simple life was a luxury for some. Wait till you see! Shanae's paintings are breathtaking, and I'm not just saying that. The world needs her talent. He was a light with passion. A stupid smile plastered across his face. True pride in his sister's craft. As for me, art was too abstract. How would one tame the subjective, bring order to chaos? There was too much I couldn't comprehend. Hmm. But was it not aesthetics that led me to understand and codify the deep mysteries of cuteness? <laughs> yes. Perhaps there was something I could learn from a craft as humble as painting. And thus, with the future of alchemy on my dainty shoulders, I pushed open the door to the studio. We entered to find Shanae violently tossing in bed. Heimel rushed over, grabbing a file of healing tincture from her bedside. Hand supporting her shaking head, he poured the concoction into her mouth. Immediately, her convulsions lessened, but her breathing was still labored. It became clear why he was so antsy back at Sierra's store. Toxic pigments could be dangerous in even the most steady of hands, and... well... I glanced down at Shanae's fingers, trembling on her bedsheets. Pressing forward, I gave her a cursory examination. Normally, I don't afford peons the luxury of my intellectual evaluation. But I was feeling generous. These symptoms are grave. Do you know what's the matter? Lyria's voice quivered with worry. I do. I've seen this exact disease once upon a time. Heimel's eyes shot to me, propelled more by hope than surprise. Truly? The local doctors have been useless. They just give her pain relievers and leave. Can you do something? As much as I wanted to refuse, in that moment, Heimel's desperation reminded me too much of my own sister. I'm not a medical professional. Sure, I know a formula that might ease her symptoms, but it's not a permanent solution. Not to mention the biggest pain in the ass, tracking down all the components. Please, you're all we've got. Ugh, begging. Now, the deal was sealed. And it had nothing to do with Lyria, Vern, and Captain Goody Two-Shoes staring holes into the back of my head. Fine. The world's cutest genius alchemist, Cagliostro, is on the case. Consider yourself lucky. We left the studio and hurried back to the airship. In this Skydom, I could think of only one environment that would produce the necessary reagents. Mount Nagelith. Perfect. The component should be somewhere around here. We need reagents attuned to water. Let's sweep the area. Roger that! My eyes are wide open! You're a mean 
water spirit. Why don't you play nice? <laughs> Go on the spot of bloom. My prey. Huh? than that. Don't fly still. enough mineral components. Next up, we'll need crystallized Psygateers. Psyga? Those flapping eyeball creatures? I think I saw some further up ahead. Sorry, Cagliostro's in a hurry. Don't mistake the mercy for wish. <laughs> Time to distill them. Mm -hmm. Score big one for Well, we'll repay you someday. The moment the potion reached Sinead's stomach, Weariness melted from her frame. That medicine will only temporarily stop your symptoms. They'll be back if you don't treat the root of the problem. Still, peace is priceless, no matter how brief. Shanae was not the only one feeling more relaxed. With tensions eased, I decided it was time to explain Shanae's condition, Lysarian Fever Syndrome. It was an autoimmune disorder of the nervous system, caused by irregularities in the body's ley line structure. Common side effects included reduced function of the lower extremities and unrelenting fevers. Development occurred in the embryotic stage, a defense against the mother's own ley line system, interpreting the fetus as a foreign object. Of course the prescribed painkillers and fever reducers had not been effective. They could not treat what was essentially a natural function of Shanae's body. But the formula you made for us, it, it suppressed her symptoms, didn't it? Sure, but suppression isn't treatment. And besides, there will be unfortunate side effects if she uses it over a long period of time. I'm just sorry I couldn't make you a true cure. Please don't apologize. I feel like I've reclaimed a part of my life thanks to you. Brave little thing. She had done nothing to earn her lot in life, but suffering claimed her all the same. 
Though the world was built upon fundamental truths, at times, I felt as if I understood nothing about it. It was a bright day when Vern, Lyria, the captain, and I went back to the studio. Shanae was staring out the window with a dazed smile. So the formula was still working. Good. Crazy how you invited yourself to the studio to see my sister's paintings. And now you're her personal pharmacist. Serendipity's funny like that. Hmm. <laughs> if you feel like repaying me, how about you finally cough up some art and show me around? <laughs> That's a fair price. Everything in the studio was painted by Schnee. Feel free to get close. Admire the details. Previously, I had managed only a distracted glance at the studio's walls. But this time, I saw visual creativity exploding off them. I wasn't an expert on art, but even I felt the vibrant energy bounding from her drawings. Powerful, powerful pieces swirled around me like a hurricane. And one painting in particular, it was resonant. Sketches were littered about the floor, too. And even they were filled with vitality. How could such a feeble body muster such vivid work? Oh yeah, about that pigment I bought when we met. Wanna see it in action? Taking the vial from a shelf, Hamel poured the pigment into a dish and mixed it with oil. A few swirls later, and the color had transformed in a way that was more chemistry than alchemy. <sighs> Intriguing. It takes a specialty product to make that hue. Hamel smiled and handed the freshly prepared paint to Shanae, who was already mid-painting. A bead of sweat trailed down her brow as she swabbed the tint across her canvas. I believe in Schnee's talent. Look at her. She's amazing. I just have to get the world to recognize it. It's nice having a supportive sibling. I meant it. <laughs> I never know how to read your tone. But, well, her condition made me realize how precious our time together is. Heimel, who clearly had never known abundance, smiled like the richest of merchants. Though Shanae had been left with a raw deal, it was clear her life wasn't without meaning. If only I could go back and tell my own sister. You were my courage when I was weak. You were my light when I was in darkness. I have lived through eons, but you were my rock. I hoped these siblings, at least, would understand what they meant to one another. I even prayed a little. Which was dumb, considering this Skydom still thinks primal beasts are gods. Huh. Guess I'm getting sentimental in my old age. Lyria and Vern became a regular fixture at the studio. They said they wanted to be there when Shanae finished her latest piece. I felt much the same. Her pieces were charming, even while portraying the thin line between life and death. Rare to get drama like that outside of a novel. But my true reason for visiting was out of concern, not interest. She was battling an unpredictable disorder, so I wanted to be around, should the worst come to pass. Could you stick around for a few? I need to run out and buy a few things. You dare waste my time with your foolish errands? Ugh, fine, but at least be quick about it. After Heimel left, Shanae waved me closer to her bed. After all you've done, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but... 
Her voice quivered. She was plainly troubled. I don't know if I can say this. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, uh... I want my brother to be free. I don't want to bind him any longer. Tears began to gloss her eyes. Without me holding him back, he could find someone and settle down. He has such a kind heart. He needs to share it. If I'm... ruining his life, then... then I would rather not be in it at all. Please, take... I interrupted her. I don't condone this, and I doubt your brother would, either. <sighs> oh, boy. If there was ever a time to talk about my past, this was it. Look, I've been in your shoes. There was nothing the village doctors could do, and I was abandoned by damn near all the townsfolk. For the dying, hope was cheap. It was better to look inevitability in the face and maintain some of your dignity. But there was one person who stood beside me. My light. My rock. My sister. She was with me the entire time, keeping me warm in the shadow of death. And in turn, I gave her the comfort of company, not being alone in this world. I continued to detail memories of my sister, over 2,000 years old, hoping that Shanae would get the point. She hung on to every word. When I concluded my story, to my disappointment, Shanae seemed to pick up the wrong message. How did you get better? Simple. The curse of genius. I developed an entire school of magic and abandoned my wretched body. I couldn't suppress a proud grin. She nodded along, not quite understanding. I couldn't blame her. Few people had the opportunity to learn the glory of alchemy, especially in these far-flung skydoms. Uh, imagine your body is a jar and your soul is water. I created a fresher, cuter jar and poured my soul into it. You can do that sort of thing? Shanae cupped her mouth in surprise. Don't insult me. There's nothing I can't do. She grew silent as gears began to whir in her head. A few moments later, she stared at me with pleading eyes and spoke. Could you... could you do it for me? Well, that was predictable. But I could relate to her predicament, and that alone made me want to help. If you really want to go through with this, I can make you a jug too. However, you should know. It wasn't going to be simple. The soul swap was messy on an experienced alchemist's psyche, much less a mundane girl's. Nor would I be around to perform maintenance down the line. It could very well be a fast track to the grave. And to inhabit an alchemized body was to stray from the natural order. She would forever be a false life form. Shanae had no knowledge of the arcane, and she was struggling to grasp these factors. And what's worse, I didn't have the decades needed to explain the details. So I opted for a simpler route, and explained the side effects in more... mortal terms. Even if your memories, knowledge, and personality make the jump, you will never feel the same. Your senses will feel foreign, your fine motor skills will be dulled. In short, goodbye, Art. Take, for example, the sky. We each paint it in our own way. One may clumsily blob some white on a blue background, while others might choose a deeper hue or express the clouds with more definite contours. Art is a negotiation between the artist's mind, eye, and hand. And if two-thirds of that equation were to change, then the artist might as well be a different person altogether. Even I, genius that I am, took centuries to adapt to this process. Finally, it means you won't be human. You'll have to maintain your body like a machine. And you'll never, 
have children. Is any of this sinking in? But... Shanae looked down at her hands, as if it were the first time she had ever seen them. It was never an easy decision. Even my sister begged me not to abandon my mortality, right until I made the hop into a new vessel. The silence was deafening. Shanae was considering her past, and what abandoning it would mean for her future. I observed her until I grew impatient. There's no reason you have to make up your mind now. As long as you found an answer before we sail out of the Skydom, I can help you either way. Kabish? I turned to leave, causing the bedridden girl to lunge after me. Wait! I don't care about losing my art. If it will free Heimel to live his life, then my choice is clear. Her tears were pierced by a genuine smile. She bore the pain of losing her creative soul and the joy of gaining a liberated brother. Even with my infinite understanding of the universe, I could not say which of those emotions was stronger. Are you sure you don't want to talk to him first? She shook her head. I felt a small pang of regret. I led her down this path because I, on some level, felt we were alike in our suffering. But the truth was, I had an, I won't say easy, easier way out. The same solution applied to Shanae's problem would be far more complicated. If anything, I felt like I understood Heimel's position more. He would simply want what was best for his sister. Just like how my own sister had wanted what was best for me. After leaving the studio, I made a list of all the materials the procedure would require. It was going to be a pain in the homunculus to gather everything, so I enlisted the crew to help. I had my sights set on the Pillar of Bayoi. Due to the high concentration of arcane energy, the materials found there made for powerful alchemical reagents. Wait till you see. Schnee's paintings are breathtaking, and I'm not just saying that. The world needs her talent. Curse that proud face of yours, Heimel. Look what you've made me do. Leo Stro! Show's coming for your cores, Mr. and Mrs. Spirit People! And while I'm at it, I might pick up a few alchemical reagents in the process. Let's go, gang! Great. This won't help anyone. Useless 
trash. Yay! This'll do the trick! Them anyway. Let's a herd? A flock? I call them target practice. Now come on. We need dark and light cores. Huh? Where are you going? There's still goons to back. Hooray! Find your skeepers! <laughs> Sounds like we're making good time. Great. This won't help anyone. for all of our elemental components. Now, if only we can track down an energy. in the old extractor, and we'll have prime crystals on our hands. Uh, what now? Don't worry about it, Mr. Lizard. Wanna head back to town? <laughs> Hagliostro, over and out. When we return to the studio, Hamel was a flustered whirlwind. Schnee told me everything. Please, we refuse to let you change her body. We were shocked to hear his refusal. Well, Vern and Lyria were. I had been expecting it. I'd like to hear the reason from her mouth. She's the one suffering, after all. What right do you have to speak for her? He grimaced. Shnei has dreamed of being a successful artist ever since she was small. Even after the fever started, she's put her entire soul into her art. And finally... In his fervent voice, you could hear how long he'd been supporting his sister, praying for her success. And now, after years of hard work, she'd made it. She had recently been invited to participate in an exclusive exhibit privilege apparently afforded to very few. Finally, Schnee will be recognized for her talent. If we throw away her chance now, what will that mean for her future? Or her legacy? I wasn't sure whether he was gritting his teeth or his fists tighter. 
Shnei's been waiting so long for this. Why add this darkness to her life now? Because you deserve to live your life too, Haimo. Brother and sister stood opposed on opposite sides of their future. I've never thought of you as a burden. I supported you because I love you. It's a blessing to watch you create. No one doubted his words. More than anything, he wanted Shanae's efforts to bloom into something beautiful. He wanted her future years to remain bright. If her dreams were so close to coming true, he reasoned, then why abandon everything now? He had a point. But he'd never been in Shanae's position before. I had. And I knew what needed to happen this time. Janae's attitude changed after hearing her brother's plea. Cagliostro, forgive me. I was selfish, looking for a quick fix. But now, I know I should face this disease and live my life the way I meant to. Figures. You needed time to process your options. Actually, that was the reason why I asked Heimel about his objections in front of Shanae. She needed to hear his part. We're sorry for wasting your time. We know it wasn't easy to gather all those components for a new body. New body? Hmm. Doesn't ring a bell. But you said you would give Schnee a new vessel. <laughs> right into my trap. I reached into my pocket and pulled out a bottle of pills and a note, handing them to Schnee. I present to you my genius medicine for slowing the progress of Lyserian fever syndrome. I calculate it's three times more effective than the previous tonic. Not hard to manufacture, either. I'll give you the recipe. Stop by Sierra's sometime, and she'll help you fill it within two to three business days. Wait, Cagliostro? So why did we go all the way to the Pillar of Vayoi? It wasn't obvious. I needed some stronger base reagents to help synthesize the first batch. My crewmates looked at me with irritation. But, when you've lived as long as I have, sometimes you need to spice things up with a few pranks. While we're on the topic, I did a little more research. Experts say that ley lines rebalance themselves after a number of years. Problem is, most people die before it can happen. But with my new prescription, you should be able to make it long enough. No sweat. Cagliostro, how can we ever repay you? You are everything to this family. Janae was so overcome with emotion, she couldn't express her own thanks. I didn't mind her silence, though. Excess sentimentality always spoiled the mood. We had more important topics to discuss anyway. Right, so about payment. The founder of Alchemy developed a new medication specifically for your family. That's gonna cost ya. Heimel swallowed, readying himself for the worst. I'm a fool. You're absolutely right. We don't have much in the way of money or valuables, but we'll do whatever it takes to... I think there's been a misunderstanding. You don't get to decide my reward. Are we clear? Shanae and Heimel both nodded in fearful silence. Ah, uh, seeing Harmony restored to the studio was a wonderful feeling. I even allowed myself to bask in memories of my sister as a treat. Some time later, I was visiting Sierra's shop in Folka. You have my payment from Shanae and Heimel? Sure do! The 
That's a big one, so take good care of her. From behind the counter, Sierra pulled out a canvas displaying the world's cutest girl. Clear skin, dewy eyes, and a mischievous smile, all framed by soft golden locks. <laughs> Utter perfection. Not that I have to explain it to you. Lots of folks have said they'd like to buy this pretty picture. We had to fight off all the amateur art collectors. Of course. Who wouldn't want a portrait of me? Though I was the only one worthy of owning such a masterpiece. I was surprised to hear you knew Lady Shanae. Must be a fancy lady, being a master and all. Wait, master? Indeedy! Youngest artist declared a master in a good long while. She's really made a name for herself in the market. Here, just got this piece in today. I had seen it before. It filled me with a resonant vitality, just as it had in that cozy little studio. But now it was accompanied by a price tag of a whopping five million rupees. I think... I'll add this one to my collection. In all my years of filling vessels with spirits, I had never procured an object with as much soul as Shanae's painting. I had to have it. Are you sure? That's my biggest budget breaker! I laughed. A few million rupees for a miracle? Chump change. Unbeknownst to Ciro Carte, I got away with a steal. <laughs>